Regular programming will not be seen at this time in order to bring you this KBOI 2 News special presentation. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. Bless it to the nourishment of our body. Thank you for the special can of green beans. If you had to go home and you had no idea, am I going to have food tonight? How would that make you feel? And I think to myself that but for the grace of God, it would be me instead of them. Nearly 75,000 Idaho children will go to bed tonight without dinner and without knowing if they'll get breakfast in the morning. Their parents could be your co-workers, your friends, even your family members. I'm Mike Murad with KBOI 2 News. And I'm Natalie Hurst. Over the next half hour, we'll show you how a bag of rice, a jar of peanut butter, and a can of green beans can become a gift to your neighbors in need. Kana Woolworth shows us how it all begins with one very special can. Like every morning, six-year-old Ashton and his big brother Logan finish their breakfast, get their shoes on, and head out the door for school. Make sure that they're tight enough, honey. But somewhere else in the Treasure Valley, other kids have a very different experience. They don't know what it's like to go to school on a full stomach. They don't know what it's like to pack a lunch or have a snack waiting for them when they get home. So today, Ashton and Logan are stepping up and making a difference in someone else's life, someone they don't even know. Ooh, sliced peaches. Ooh, green beans. I love green beans. As Ashton reaches far into his mom's pantry and picks out his favorite foods to give away, he doesn't know how much he and his brother are helping. Do they realize if it were not for this can, someone else might not eat? The boys load up their packs with canned goods for the school food drive, but mom decides to make one a little different. I think maybe we should tie a ribbon around one can. Okay. Because it's going to be a special can. It's special. Well, it's kind of like all, all, all of this food is kind of like a present. Ew. So we'll just make one of them look more like a present. Maybe this one can, maybe it'll go to boys like you. Then they can have dinner with their family and eat green beans, the green beans that, that you guys gave them. That's a lot of food. Well, there are a lot of people who need, need extra food. Okay. So they zip up their packs, put on their jackets and head to school. But the lessons learned today will be in compassion and generosity. The weight of their good fortune bears on their tiny shoulders as they prepare to make a huge difference. It took many tiny shoulders to collect 1,200 cans of food, and it all started with a plea from the Idaho Food Bank. Everybody close your eyes. Okay, please imagine with me that it's the end of the school day. You've had a very busy day and you've worked and played very hard. You're hungry. You come into the house and you go to the cabinets or the refrigerator. You open them, but there's nothing to eat. An exercise in imagination for some, a fact of life for others. But students at Liberty Elementary School in Boise know they're making a difference. Year-round, this one school collects more in food drive donations than just about any other in the Treasure Valley. Do you have any friends that have a problem their family's putting food on the table? Well, I'm sure that there are, but I just don't know who they are, and that's, that's almost the fun of this, because when you do that, you, don't, you can't tell who you've given it to, but you might walk by them at school or something. This time, they've got a mission, to see just how many cans they can collect in just five days. And I'm happy to help because years ago, others helped us. My dad had to work two jobs and we didn't have a lot of money. So we didn't have a lot of food all the time. My family made sure I never went to bed hungry and never went without breakfast. But a lot of kids right here in Idaho aren't so lucky. Liberty Elementary took up the challenge even before I sweetened the deal. Class that raises the most food gets an ice cream party on me. We asked the students of Liberty to see if they could fill three big barrels for the Idaho Food Bank. They ended up doing a lot more than that. 
Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Kena Whitworth, and I'm the morning anchor at KBOI 2 TV. Teachers, listen up. If you have food in your classrooms right now, we want you to take a tally and then bring it down to the front entrance. And they did, big time. For a week straight, this was the daily drill. I got 35! I got 12! This is a big op opportunity for our whole school to do, and I thought it was really an, an exciting moment to do. Three barrels quickly doubled to six, and six turned into nine as the bins overflowed with goodwill. It teaches the kids a sense of responsibility, not only to themselves and to their family, but to the community at large, that, that if we work with each other, we will make our community and our state a better place to live. Well, where did you learn that? Was it from your parents? Was it from your school? Was it from your friends? Um, it's probably a little of everything. They're good role models because they're, in a second, they're willing to give up some time and just run down and go help people. I think you're a pretty good role model. <laughs> High five, good job. All right, we like that. All this food, including Ashton's can of green beans, now leaves the school and is headed here to the Idaho Food Bank. And you know, Mike, that's where volunteers get involved. Thousands of them come here to sort all of this stuff and then they distribute it to those who literally can't afford to eat. The Idaho Food Bank truck rounds the corner. Somewhere in this pile of food is Ashton's can his special gift with the red ribbon. The barrels come off the truck, a whopping 1,560 pounds of food donated by students at Liberty Elementary in just one week. Employees and volunteers will separate and sort everything in all nine barrels. While many Idahoans out there have really stepped up to help donate some food, there are a few things that the Idaho Food Bank can't accept. For example, they can't take the jars of baby food because of safety reasons. But what they can take are these pre-packaged plastic containers of baby food. Another thing, they can't accept anything that doesn't have nutritional information on it. And they can't take severely dented cans for fear of bacteria. Those items are pulled during the sorting process. Each type of food is then put into a different category, like vegetables, dairy, protein. Ashton's can finds itself in the vegetable box that's ready for the Salvation Army pickup. The organization arrives soon after and loads its van with food. It's now headed for Nampa. When the shipment gets there, the food is once again sorted. Oh, hey, cool. I'll put this right in front so Stephanie will see it. The Salvation Army makes boxes of food for families to come pick up. They make sure everyone gets a variety. That box will feed a family of six for an entire week. The Salvation Army is only the beginning. Next, we'll show you the faces of your neighbors in need who are reaching out for your help, your donations. And later, we'll show you the journey of Ashton's can of green beans. Thanks for joining us for this KBY 2 News special, Neighbors in Need. Children at Liberty Elementary were asked to hold a food drive. Their goal was to fill three barrels, but take a look at this. Instead, they filled nine. After food's collected, it's loaded onto a truck and taken to the Idaho Food Bank where it gets sorted. Adam Rodriguez tells us where it goes from there. We follow the journeys of cans like this to agencies like Oasis. Without the work of these hidden heroes, a lot of these families would go to bed hungry. Number 20! They're the faces of hunger in Idaho. Mothers and fathers, children and the elderly, all of them in need. We give it out to people and allow them to take as much as, much as they can use. It's Wednesday at Oasis Worship and Food Center in Caldwell, and hundreds have come for something to eat. One of them is Douglas, a Caldwell man with lots of mouths to feed. I've got uh, my grandkids with me this week. Douglas gets some canned foods and looks through piles of produce, food too old for stores that he plans to make into a stew. Take a beef roast, make a beef roast. And then after uh, a couple of days when everybody's tired of having the roast beef or, and the potatoes for dinner, then take and make a stew. And that way uh, I stretch one meal into five and that all helps. Faye was also shopping for an entire family. She thought these pairs would make a good snack for her grandson. Without this place, 
we would be eating potatoes and potatoes and potatoes. Christina can't find work and comes to Oasis to feed her two daughters. My little daughter, my youngest one, just helping, helping this morning, bagging up stuff. So she was really enjoying to come help and, and, and she enjoys the food. By volunteering to help put food together, Lewis teaches her girls that it's better to give than receive. I don't have that much, but I try to help the most I can. Dr. Royce Wright says they started small at Oasis, feeding eight to ten families a week. Today, they'll help close to 200. My numero nine. The food comes from a combination of places, the Idaho Food Bank, grocery stores, grants and donations. Somehow, the center manages to multiply those loaves to feed thousands. We had one time that uh, we didn't have enough food, and people just kept coming. We didn't have enough food. And, and I tell everybody, we never run out of food. And there were still people needing food. And a car pulled up with a bunch of food in it and we were able to feed the people. It's nothing fancy, but it's appreciated. Between that and what I've got in the, there and what I've got at the house, and uh, I'll be able to keep everybody fed. And, and inspires gratitude among the young and old. I firmly believe that if we'll just hook our arms together, we can help eliminate hunger in the state of Idaho. The Idaho Food Bank works hard every day to help agencies like Oasis. But get up here and you take a look around, you can see that not all the shelves are full. In fact, if you head out of Boise and you go into rural Idaho, you'll find the hunger for our neighbors in need gets a whole lot worse. For two days a week, seniors in one of Idaho's most remote communities won't worry where their next meal's coming from. A new food pantry's just opened in Idaho City. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, some of our state's most vulnerable residents pack the hall in search of a hot lunch or dinner. If I was at home, I wouldn't be eating like I do here. You know, the two days out of the week, I get what I should get every day, but <laughs> at least two days I get it. Jim travels from Duquette Pine to eat. Today, it's chicken, yeah, gravy, it. rice, and beans. Unlike Jim, Laura is surrounded by food all the time. She's a waitress at a Boise County diner. What she eats at work gets deducted from her paycheck. At times, that leaves very little left for the other necessities like rent, gas, and utilities. It's her reality, but something she doesn't dwell on. What do you to think about it? Like I didn't eat yesterday, for instance, you know, so, and I ate at work today, so, and I usually come down here on Tuesdays and eat. To give back, both Jim and Laura volunteer at the center. Those volunteering this day make sure Laura takes a little food with her. I see how much will the box make a difference right in your life? A lot. Jim and Laura are the lucky ones. Unemployment rates are much higher in rural America than in the city, and services for seniors so much harder to come by. The older people that don't get around much, you know, they can't. Uh, they have to have somebody bring them in and things like that. Yeah, they would do without meals if they, you know, if they didn't have this. It takes more than just donations to help your neighbors in need. It takes a little strength, <laughs> an open heart. That's when I was really overcome with compassion for the man here. And in one case, divine intervention. I felt that God was saying to me, I want you to go there and work at it. That's what I felt. We'll have this man's inspiring story when we come back. Plus, we're tracking Ashton's can of green beans on this KBOI 2 News special, Neighbors and Needs. So far, we'd followed a simple can of green beans from one child's cupboard to a donation bin. And from there, went to the Idaho Food Bank where volunteers got it ready for its next destination. Without the volunteers, the mission of feeding Idaho's hungry would fail. KBOI 2's Vin Crosby shows us how their dedication makes it happen. Some people give food. Others give of their time. It provides so much more than a hot meal. It gives them hope for tomorrow. Most kitchens have a distinct smell. This one has a voice that stands out. We have a tomato soup, we have a minestrone soup, we have cream of broccoli. And every day there is a line of people waiting to hear it. Yeah, we got the living bread as well, it's right over by my desk. That accent and the man, Neil Cameron, came to Boise all the way from New Zealand. To get here, all it took was a phone call, prayer, and some divine ingredients. 
Lo and behold, uh, later on that evening, I rang up and spoke with my wife. And when she had finished uh, the chapel service at City Light, she had prayed. She was overcome with compassion as well. And the same vision that she received, that I received, she received. So we made a decision to sell up our home, sell up our business and move. That's why I'm here. And help serve hundreds of hot meals every day. And he says without the community support, these meals wouldn't exist. But just the food donations is huge. Um, I, I, I purchase things for the kitchen as well. And my goal is to purchase nothing. And, and we have our actual purchasing in this kitchen down so, so low. Why? <laughs> the people of Idaho. Working the recovery program here is hard work and requires each man to take a good look at himself in the mirror. And that's tough, even without an addiction. And these meals help take some of that weight off the shoulders. We can concentrate on ourselves and not have to worry about our nutrition. When we know it's coming in the building, we know we're getting good meals. So. Every time someone here takes a bite or gets a full plate of food, it's a victory against hunger here in Idaho. That can continue with your donations to the Idaho Food Bank and servants like Neil. Have we done grace yet? Who has a distinct voice. Okay, shall we say grace? Hi Andrew, you're first in the queue, buddy. And right. a heart of gold. Right. Can we all come down heads, please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. That's the story of just one volunteer making an amazing difference, but you may be surprised to know just how many people are one meal away from becoming a neighbor in need. KBOI 2's Jay Bates puts that into perspective. One in 10 Idaho families needs help getting food on the table. They could be one week, one meal, one paycheck away from needing the help. It could be your neighbors, it could be you. The faces of hunger and assistance are changing in our area. Stereotypes about who needs help getting food on the table are gone as the economy continues to hurt Idahoans. 754.79. The Leg family knows all too well how close they are to needing a little help. We're making it pretty much paycheck to paycheck as it is. To lose my job would be the absolute most stressful thing for me because I'm, I'm not able to take care of my family. We'd be definitely hurting if we lost our paycheck, if we completely didn't get paid this next um, round, we would be in trouble. A place our neighbors are finding themselves all too often. I'm getting my last unemployment check this week. Yeah, so I'll probably be one of those people standing out there holding a sign. <laughs> well, we're wondering how we're gonna pay rent next month. Financial educator Jeff Sorensen sees the challenges every day. Helping people manage their debt, he's seen more people who aren't prepared for the worst. You might be able to get through for, for six, seven months uh, before real trouble sits in. But for a lot of people who have no savings, it's a matter of a month or two before the bills start piling up. It could be us. It could be our neighbors. It could be our family members so easily finding themselves in that kind of a position. Vox says that 26% of the people receiving help from the food bank are children. Another 20% are seniors and more and more people are asking for help. We've had a number of people who have been previously our donors for the Idaho Food Bank and now they're receiving food through our network. So we've always given to the different uh, charity organizations and, and different things because we would hope that at some point if we needed the help that we'd be able to receive it. For, for a number of people it you know it's tough to go through those kinds of times and, and you don't feel good about it and there's a lot of pride that's wrapped up in going through those kinds of changes in your life. When push comes to shove we would want to make sure that our family is being able to eat and so we'd have to do what we'd have to do to make sure that our family is being taken care of. Right now some of you may be thinking this could never be me. That's exactly what one grandmother thought until she crossed that line and became a neighbor in need. To have to come and say, we've given you food, but now we need it. Hear her emotional story of struggle and survival, plus Ashton's can of green beans finally finds its home. That's coming up on Neighbors in Need. Today we've shown you 
who has donated their food and who has donated their time. And now we'll show you why it really matters. People say the most difficult part is walking in the door. It's about pride. You have to be able to humble yourself enough to go ask for help when, when you don't have it. Asking for help isn't easy, especially for this Nampa woman who we'll call Mary. Mary and her family used to donate to food drives. I can remember the boys going in and pulling cans of stuff off. But now their cupboards are empty. To have to come and say, we've given you food, but now we need it. That um, ends aren't making it anymore. Like so many Americans, they've fallen on hard times. Mary and her husband are now taking care of their son and his two boys, and they need the food. So she asks. Thank you. With the help of her caregiver, Mary can get home Thanks. in enough time to have soup ready for her two grandkids when they return from school. Right here. The donated food covers her kitchen table, each item from someone she doesn't know. Oh, look at the ribbon. <laughs> I bet you somebody sent it with love. The boys come barreling in the door from school, hungry and ready for what grandma has on the stove. How about if we open the beans? and you put them in the pot of soup that I got heating for you so you'd have something to eat when you got home from school. Good. Without the donations of people all across the Treasure Valley, that pot would be empty. They couldn't sit around the dinner table. They would have little to be thankful for. But instead, this family can pray together and now be thankful for what's been given to them. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. Bless it to the nourishment of our body. Thank you for the special can of green beans. It's a story that crosses many miles and pulls strangers together. But it's really a story about giving whatever you can, what little you can, many times not realizing the impact you're making. It all started with just one can. After that, students here at Liberty Elementary collected enough food for 1,000 meals, and they did it all in just five days, helping out neighbors in need. But the hunger doesn't end there, and that's why we need your help. Once again, KBOI 2 News is co-sponsoring Drive, Drop, and Donate. On Friday from 5 in the morning until 7 at night, we're accepting your cans and other non-perishable food items. Just drop it off at either Bronco Motors in Nampa, RC Willie in Meridian, or outside our studio in Boise. Thanks for sharing this journey and for sharing those amazing stories of your neighbors in need. The students at Liberty Elementary have done their part. Now it's our turn. I expect to pass through this world just once. Any good thing, therefore, that I can do or any kindness I can show to any fellow human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer nor neglect it. Or I shall not pass this way again. 